What's your, I tried to do a nice thing, but it ended in disaster story? Story one. I booked a hotel room for me and my husband as a surprise a couple of years back. It was fairly nice, not super high-end or anything, but over a hundred pounds for the night. Mid-range for a small town like mine, I suppose. Unfortunately, a day before we were due to stay there, I had a pretty spectacular panic attack and spent the whole weekend in bed feeling sorry for myself. Not my lovely, big, cloud-soft hotel bed, but my own squeaky-butt IKEA piece-of-crap bed. As the hotel was paid for on a non-refundable basis, I thought I'd go on Facebook and ask my friends if anyone wanted a free weekend away. A girl I knew a little sent me a message saying she would love the room if it was still free. She'd not long ago had a baby, she was struggling a little, and she could use an evening away. So I gave her all the details, check-in times, my phone number in case she needed it to give it to them, and all the other necessary paperwork, including the fact that it was a non-smoking room. I called the hotel and asked them to change the name the booking was in, which they did, but they couldn't change anything else. Didn't think it would be an issue at all. Anyway, she went, she stayed, she had a lovely relaxing weekend, and on the Sunday night after she checked out, I got a very angry call from the hotel manager. Apparently, the room was trashed. Food everywhere, in the carpets, on the bed, even on the curtains. There was evidence of smoking and drug paraphernalia in the bathroom. I explained what had happened, but as the booking was all done by me with my bank card, I was liable. They charged me another hundred pounds for the room because they had to clean it instead of letting it, plus extra for the cleanup. I got stiffed nearly 300 pounds for a hotel room I never even got to stay in. I messaged the girl to at least get some of the cash back, but she blocked me on all platforms. It was a lot of money for me, and it meant I didn't feed my family very well for the next month or so, but hey, lesson learned. I'll let the room go empty next time. Better to lose 100 pounds than 300 pounds. Oh, that is just kind of gross on that person's part. I mean, you know, gross in the kind of literal way as, like, having food and the carpet and all that stuff is gross. But... Also, just to be like that, I know you kind of said that you, you indicated you didn't know her super well or whatnot. And so, like, oh, that just, what a rude thing to do. And then to, like, block you after all that stuff? I'm sorry. Story two. Not my story. A friend's mom lives in the Sierra Nevada mountains. One of her husband's favorite foods is Cornish game hens. So he goes away on a trip and she decides she'll surprise him and buy some. Now, I guess at a certain point, they're no longer good to eat. So just before that point, she went to kill them and prepare them. So she went to kill one by decapitating it and couldn't bring herself to do it. At some point, she mustered up the will to go ahead with it, lopped one's head off, and it literally ran around spraying blood everywhere. She was beside herself. Fast forward, her husband comes home, and she comes clean. At this point, they're no longer viable to eat. He decides he'll take them over to the river near their house, kill them, and let the bottom feeders in the river do the rest. He throws the first one in the river when he realizes that this dead hen is floating. He panics and jumps in the river to get it. People swim in this river. He comes back to the house, deciding the best bet is to drive up to the mountains, drop them all off, and let nature take its course. A day later, his mom receives a call from their neighbor. The call goes something like this. Neighbor. Hey, mom, you have Cornish game hens, right? Mom, nervously. Yes? Neighbor. I've got a favor to ask of you. I was in the mountains hunting yesterday, and some butthole left six Cornish game hens on the side of the road to die. I couldn't leave them. Would you be able to take them? Mom. Oh, that's horrible. Sure, we can take them. The husband ultimately had to kill them and dispose of them. Hello, well, that is how we ended up with chickens one winter. Came out to shovel snow, six hens and three roosters were eating in our front yard. Guess they saw a farm and figured we'd adopted them instead of letting them starve. It's pretty bold <laughs> to buy living birds that you're intending to kill and cook without having ever done it before and being kind of squeamish about it. <laughs> I mean... Props for wanting to do something nice, and I can understand being like, oh my god, I can't do this, but man, that's a lot of investment and hassle for, uh, for something that turned out like that. 
Story 3. I offered to let a good friend I hadn't seen in two years stay at my house for a week while he was battling a tough home situation and drug addiction in another city. I thought it would be a good idea for him to come out and stay with me for a bit, especially since he was trying to kick his addiction back home, but his parents were enablers, and also that I missed him because he was my best friend. Instead, he decided to treat the week at my house as a drug retreat and spent the whole time getting high, trashing my house, and reconnecting with the wrong people. He used to live in my city, but his parents kept moving all of them around, so there were people he knew here. It is also important to note I'm not much of a drug person and was consistently encouraging him to kick his addiction. We've been best friends since we were maybe seven. Keep in mind, this happened when we were both 18. After he left, I cut all ties with him temporarily. I've slowly reconnected with him recently, and he is still trying to kick his habit, but that week with him living with me was heck on earth and very nearly killed my best friendship I had. It basically did kill it for a few months. Guys, please don't experiment with drugs, especially if you know you're likely to get hooked. If not for yourself, don't try them for the sake of the people that care for you. If you do get addicted, you won't be the only person to suffer the consequences. The people that love you will also have to go through a battle. People do love you. Don't throw that love away for a short thrill and a long road to recovery. Story 4. On the subway, an older gentleman with a cane gets on, drops his backpack on a seat, then crosses to the other side of the car for some reason. Door closed, he turns back, the train starts moving, he starts falling towards me. I try to catch him as best I can, with the speed of his movement plus the train's momentum plus his weight, all combined with the weird angle, I caught him as I tear the frick out of the muscles in my forearm. He still ended up on the floor, but he didn't hit his head since I caught his shoulders. He swings his cane up and shatters the window to the door, though thankfully it has a protective film so it doesn't go anywhere. He starts swearing, so I get up cradling my arm that could well be broken for all I knew at that moment and walk away. I didn't need another injury if he was peed. I didn't catch him well enough. Good deeds don't go unpunished. I also couldn't ice it for 30 to 40 minutes because the person with the keys to where I was working that day ended up sleeping in late. It took months before I could carry anything with that arm. I mean, you tried to do the right thing, and I think that's admirable, and unfortunately it ended pretty poorly, but I imagine that if you were presented with that whole opportunity again, you'd probably do the same thing because you don't know how much more hurt the old man could have got. So good on you for, you know, sacrificing yourself a little bit for someone else. Story five, went to an auto parts store to get something. I don't remember what. Saw a woman outside staring under the hood of her car with an, I have no idea what I'm looking at sort of vibe. It was super hot that day, and she had a bunch of kids with her. I asked the guy inside if he knew what was going on, and he said she needed a new battery but couldn't afford their cheapest one. I'm not wealthy, but I've always believed in doing what you can to help others, and I had already paid my bills and had enough to swing a new battery for her. So I told him to grab whatever battery she needed. I walked out with the battery and said to the woman, I heard you needed a new battery, and I know you didn't ask anyone to help, but I hope it's okay that I took care of getting one for you. Or something to that tune. She screamed really loud, get the frick out of my face, white people are always trying to help somebody. So I got the frick out of her face and returned the battery. On the way back to my car, I looked at one of the kids and they mouthed, I'm sorry, thanks for trying. I nodded and drove away. White people are always trying to help somebody. That's a first for me in terms of either insults or compliments. Story 6. I was throwing my wife of six years a surprise birthday party and went through her phone to get contact info for her friends. Found recent text messages to an ex-boyfriend saying how much she missed him and wanted to be back with him. Story 7. I was up for a promotion at work. One of my co-workers, a single 23-year-old mom of two kids, also wanted it. I was far more qualified and knew it was going to be offered to me, a gay man with no kids, so I had a meeting with management and told them I stepped down so she could have the money and experience for her kids. Three months later, she got with this guy and got obsessive, texted all day, always on the phone arguing with him if he so much as looked at another girl, then started calling out sick all the time and not doing any work at all. Finally, she got fired. Last frickin' time I ever did anything like that again. Story 8. One of my best friends was having a really bad day at work on his first day on the job and started texting me about it while he was on break. I snapchatted his girlfriend, who was a good friend at the time, and told her about it while also saying, If anyone would know how to cheer him up, it's you. 
She said she'd do it and make a surprise date plan to make his day better. A few hours after he got back from work later, I asked her how it went and she proceeded to rip me a new one for an hour about how if her boyfriend is having a bad day, she doesn't need me telling her and she could figure it out herself. That's just her being a butt. Giving someone a heads up slash engaging someone's loved one to help is a really nice thing to do. Okay, that's just a little bit too possessive of someone that you're dating. Like, girlfriend, you can't be the boyfriend's everything and know every little facet of his life. If a friend is sharing something with you, don't be like, how dare you? How dare you step into my realm? Like, no matter, I mean, and this goes for boyfriends with girlfriends with boyfriends with whatever, like, don't be that possessive. Like, friends might be able to see stuff that you don't. That, that's weird. Story 9. Not as extreme as other people's, but for Mother's Day when I was 13, I tried to make my mom scrambled eggs and bacon for breakfast because they were her favorite. I added too much milk to the eggs, meaning they couldn't cook properly, and ended up setting fire to the bacon. The saint still ate it all with a smile on her face. Story 10. I used to work as a waitress and had a couple come in and order the all-you-can-eat special. They ended up only eating one plate of food, so I offered to only charge them for the one plate of food instead of the all-you-can-eat since it's cheaper. I made the change to their bill and brought it back to them. Later, they complained to a manager saying I was being rude to them. So, since it wasn't a significant discount, they thought I was trying to imply that they were poor. I was just trying to be nice, but dang, excuse the heck out of me. Story 11. I washed my girlfriend's clothes once as we lived together. It turns out all her things shrunk in the dryer and she had to buy some new shirts. We're married now, but it was a disaster at the time. Story 12. Planned an intervention for my bestie. She found out and accused me of trying to turn everyone against her. All the friends that helped me plan the intervention suddenly turned on me and not only decided that enabling her addiction was the better route, they also told her the intervention was 100% me and they were forced to go along with it. What? I was so peed, I never spoke to any of them again. None of them are friends with each other anymore and the addict is with a guy that regularly beats her. I haven't seen her in about eight years, but people I know have seen her and it's always the same story, that she's drunk or strung out. The sad reality is, if you have an intervention for someone who really needs that help, you're running a risk because an intervention's not going to work unless that person at least partially wants it to work. And you're not to blame for that. You tried and you did the right thing. The fact that your other friends then, like, turned on you like that is really upsetting and gross. And I hope that they all feel an amount of shame for that because that's that's not helping anyone and that's really awful to you. So I'm sorry that you went through that. Story 13. When I was a child, I thought janitors were paid by how much trash they picked up. Imagine a little piece of crap waddling up to you, dropping his bag of chips on the floor in front of you, and smiling at you like he did you a friggin' favor. As a cleaner, I find this hilarious. I also want to add that we definitely do not get paid by the amount of trash we collect. I may suggest this to the union reps next meeting, though. Story 14. I was a manager at a warehouse job. One of the young kids came into my office and said he couldn't work for us anymore, but also said he can't afford not to. He was in a tough spot. I told him to start looking and applying for jobs and to use me as a reference. Offered to let him out of work for interviews and just tried to be supportive in general. He stays for about six months past our conversation and starts underperforming drastically. He even stopped showing up consistently. We had a few conversations about performance and attendance, and eventually I told him we were done being flexible and he needed to either do his job or stop coming in. He stopped coming in. Then I got a call from the labor board that said we wrongfully dismissed him. After investigation, they found I had no evidence of our conversation six months earlier and we had to pay him severance. Unfortunately, that was the last time I tried to be so accommodating. I was a young manager who learned a valuable lesson here in documentation. Story 15. One time I saw an old man and his dog alone in the bar. He looked sad and alone, so I thought I would be nice and go up to speak to him. I was slightly drunk and extra friendly. He immediately started telling me about how he and his dog were thousand-year-old aliens, and I suddenly realized why everyone had been staying far away from him. 
I tried to excuse myself for a few minutes before he pulled a ukulele out of nowhere and started loudly serenading me with a love song in front of the whole bar. I ended up on more than one Snapchat story that night. Story 16. A couple years ago in high school, I would volunteer feeding the homeless once a week through the school. Basically, we made some cheap meals in our cafeteria, think mac and cheese, pasta, salad, and would bring the meals to a nearby park where a lot of homeless people camped out. The program was run by one of the school's administrators. One of the weeks I was helping hand out food, I saw an older woman standing off to the side who looked kind of disheveled. She didn't have a meal, so trying to be as generous as possible, I walked over with a meal in hand. I offered her the food, but she politely declined. Not one to be turned away easily, I insisted that she should take some. At this point, she kindly informed me that she was Mr. School Administrator's wife. I was absolutely mortified and started apologizing profusely. She laughed and said it was fine, but right after this, I saw her talking to her husband, and he did not look very happy. But the worst part was that the next day, I had an interview to be on the equivalent of my school's ASB. The interview was with a current ASB member and a random administrator. Can you guess who? Yep, the guy whose wife I mistook for a homeless woman. Long story short, I did not get that position. I am sorry that you had to go through that. Like, that sucks. And to heck with her if she genuinely did, like, take offense to that and stuff. I'm sorry, but... There's there's a number of things wrong with that, you know? She should have been flattered that you were willing to go out and help and should have seen the kind heart that you had. And so that's that's on her. And if she's going to be that way, then bleh, you don't want her approval to begin with. Story 17. I invited the girl everyone hated to my birthday, and she made it about herself, bullied my friends, talked about it openly to people who I couldn't invite or didn't want to, talked about me behind my back for months, saying that it sucked and her family is so poor. Yeah, so I don't do birthday parties anymore, really. Story 18. My little brother at the time, probably around 15, had picked up a huge nug of weed and had nothing to smoke it with. I went to work, I was 16 at the time, and figured he would have the munchies after I clocked out of my shift. I called his cell phone to see if he wanted Taco Bell because I'm a good sister. I would pick it up for him. Well, he didn't answer his phone, so I called our house's landline and my mom answered. I was vague in telling her why I was going to Taco Bell so late at night, but asked my mom if my brother wanted anything, thinking that he had already smoked. She walked into his room with him and this huge nugget making a pipe out of tin foil. She had him flush the weed down the toilet, and I came home to my very Italian mother panicking that he's ruining his life. Fast forward a decade, now I'm the stoner, and he's a correctional officer in our hometown. <laughs> I'm certain that this wasn't what I'm thinking, but in my mind, the way I'm reading this story in the end, it's like this was the event that you're like... No, I did this to him because of the drugs. I don't know what he's going through, and you started doing drugs, but this was also the event where, like, his mom got him, and he was just like, I can never do this again. The My mom's disappointment and this one chance happening is what turned both of your lives into this. I mean, maybe for him, maybe for both of you, I don't know, but uh, I, you know, hey, if you're a stoner, uh, welcome to... A club that I'm familiar with. Story 19. Try to help my alcoholic slash crystal using cousin find a job. He was making progress with his alcoholism and hadn't used it in a while, so I talked with my buddy who runs a landscaping business. I vouched for my cousin and told him how hard of a worker he was, which is true because he would work me to death when I needed another pair of hands. I was very upfront with his shortcomings, but was also upfront with his progress and just asked for a fair chance. Gave them my word he'd work. I got called a week later and was told my word means nothing now. He showed up late, left early, stole tools, and just went missing on job sites. Story 20. I worked in a memory clinic doing diagnostic tests. This lady came in with her sons. They told me that she had begged to come because she thought there might be an issue with her memory. She confirmed this, saying if there's a problem, she wanted help and medication. At the end of the test, I asked if she wanted to know the results. She again confirmed. I told her that unfortunately she did have a memory problem, that from her history she may benefit from medication, and I would arrange for her to see the consultant, attending in the U.S., I think. 
She then told me in no uncertain terms what an awful person I was, that I should be ashamed to do this to people, and I was wrong. Also, we shouldn't have sent her an appointment, at her request, because basically we were trying to trick old people into giving up their independence. She was very eloquent. Me and her sons just sat open-mouthed. Classic dementia. Story 21. I once held a door open for an old man who was using a cane and had his arm in a sling and cast. I was just trying to be polite, but he was totally offended, and he proceeded to chew me out, telling me that he didn't need some woman to hold the door for him because he was not a cripple. It was incredibly awkward. First and only time I've ever had to apologize for offering to help someone. Sir, I hold doors for everyone, so it's not all about you. <laughs> Screw people like that. I'm sorry, there's no winning with these people. Ah, oh, young kids these days, they're so rude. Oh, I don't need you to hold a door open for me. And the fact that he apparently implied he didn't need some woman to hold the door from him. Uh, if that's accurate, that's just an extra layer of, like, grossness and... I mean, it's an insecurity on his part, and that sucks. I'm sure he feels kind of insecure, getting old and struggling, and that sucks. And I do feel bad for him in that regard, but if he's going to take it out on other people, then, yeah, no, I would have just been like, fine, and closed the door on him. Story 22. I work at a gas station, and a woman who was obviously going through some hard times paid for $2 and some change in gas. So I set her pump for an extra $15 and paid for it myself. I forgot I had bills coming out the next morning and it overdrafted my account because only one was able to go through. I hope she really needed that gas because it cost me $45 for the gas and overdraft fee. Story 23. I was at a buffet lunch for work. There's this nice looking girl and she had crumbs all over her face somehow. So I thought I would do her a solid and tell her. She said, that's my face. I look a little closer and see that it has lots of dry skin, so that didn't really work out. I did see her a little later and she had obviously gone away and sorted it out. I decided to double down and told her, good work on the face. Oh, she called me a butthole and now we are friends. Sometimes if a frick up, best to acknowledge it by making a butt of yourself again is how I often play it. Story 24. So I had a friend a few years ago. She was super insecure and was messaging me about how she doesn't like her figure. She thought she was fat. Now picture me, super awkward, can't communicate for her life, but wants to make people happy. So I say to her she isn't fat, but if she's unhappy with her figure, I'd be happy to help her find a sport or diet that works for her so she can feel better. She interpreted this as me calling her fat, and she told all our friends who decided not to speak to me. Folks, there's nothing wrong with whatever kind of body type you're comfortable having, be you bigger or skinny or whatever. I've been notably bigger in my life. I've lost weight, this and whatever. It doesn't matter so long as you're happy in your body. But if you're going to go to people and express that you're really unhappy with your body and those people then go like, uh, if there's anything that I can do to help, you know, I've got experience with, in this case, like, you know, uh, dieting and workout, and maybe that could help you out. You brought up that you were unhappy, and this person just wants to help you. It's not very helpful to lash out, you know. You've expressed your unhappiness, and you should be encouraged to get the kind of body that you're happy with, whatever that body type may be. Story 25. At the beach, some kid's ball went in the water and they couldn't swim. I was out of the water sitting and said I could get it for them. Right before grabbing the ball, I got stung by a stingray on my foot. A year later, a neighbor's dog got out of the house and started running all over the place. The owner was an older woman and there was no way she was going to catch the dog. So I chased it for about 30 minutes all over the neighborhood and through the golf course next to our neighborhood. Once I finally got up to the dog, it bit me on the hand and almost got infected. Frick that dog. Story 26. I had a really good friend. One day, a really good friend came back from boot camp. He flunked out somehow and his mom was kicking him out. He was 18 and had nowhere to go. He called me and asked if he could stay with me for a few nights. I bought him a burner phone and basic service on it so that he can apply to jobs. Fast forward to three months later, I'm checking my debit card statement. The dumb butt used my debit card to buy League of Legends skins. He got evicted a second time in three months, over $25 on a free-to-play game. Story 27. 
Not me, but my brother. He tried to catch a mouse to set it outside so that our cats wouldn't kill it. Long story short, he tried to grab it as it was running under the fridge and ended up snapping its neck and killing it accidentally and obviously. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.